the meeting was one of the oddest gatherings of fearsome individuals ANSI had ever attended, and that included a few command gatherings of Malazan Imperial Mages and Claws. He took his place next to Lieutenant Palal. Opposite waited the tall, slim woman who had called the meeting. Her complexion was olive-hued and her hair dark and straight, pinned up in a complex design. Her dark eyes watched Ansi with a look that seemed to enjoy his discomfort. The large, loose circle also included the carmine-wearing old woman and her fat companion, together with Jalen, who glared his hatred. Ansi noted that the fat fellow seemed to spend most of his time with his gaze narrowed on the tall woman. To one side waited the armoured figure of the blonde-haired mercenary who had preceded them onto the spawn. He was flanked by two of his men. All still carried canvas covers over their shields. Ansi wondered if these might be members of the Grey Swords. Yet, they carried no symbols of the Wolves of Winter, nor any other god that he could recognise. An old man, his thin hair a must cloud around his uneven skull, came shuffling up on his slippered feet. Also emerging from the gloom came the slim, dark form of Malachi. Ansi could not believe he was seeing him again. He thought the man dead or long escaped from the spawn. Look what turned up. He drawled, giving him a hard stare. The thief bowed, one brow quirked. So you made it. Congratulations. I am very surprised. No thanks to you, you hood damn piece of. So you two know each other? The tall woman cuts in, loud and firm. How nice. Yet, introductions are in order, I imagine. We are not yet all gathered. <coughs> the old fellow observed in a quavering, breathless wheeze. Did someone call a meeting? A man's voice inquired from the dark. Is attendance mandatory? The owner of the smooth voice came forward. A man dressed in expensive silks over a fine blackened male coat that hung to his shins. His midnight hair was slicked back and a goatee beard and moustache framed his mouth. A wide heavy two-handed sword hung at his side. The tall woman, Ansi noted, eyed this well-dressed fellow with obvious distaste. Introductions? The old woman squawked. She tossed her head, her ribbons rustling. There need not be any introductions. I do not want introductions. Damn all of you. I care nothing for you. Quiet! The fat fellow at her side supplied, like a punctuation ending her rant. Thank you, Hester and Ogul. Ogul, Dolo, from the Lamukanerat. The fat fellow corrected. Do please get it right. We know our bailout, Ceres. The tall woman, Ceres, smiled, revealing sharp white teeth. Yes, Ogul. Ken Bergen. The old man sneezed at Ansi. Ansi leaned down to him. What was that? Hem Dergen? Hem the old man repeated angrily. Hemta! Hemta Green! Ansi flinched away from the spray of spittle. He wiped his sleeve. Right, Hempa. The elegant fellow inclined his head to Ansi in an ironic salute. Borshalain! He gestured vaguely to his rear. My companion, Corbal Broch, is. Ah! Currently preoccupied. It may have been the poor light, but it appeared to Ansi as if at the man's words everyone present turned a shade more pale. He cleared his throat in an effort to find his voice. Ah, Ansi. Ansi's the name. 
All this time, Jalin had been whispering fiercely and pulling on the old woman's rags, whispering and pointing. She cuffed him now and shot out a withered, crooked finger. What is in your bag, soldier? To the past of the dead with you, you damned hag. And the woman jerked so sharply, the ribbons hanging from her hair snapped like whips. Her eyes widened in disbelief, then slitted almost closed. A sort of creamy smile came to her wrinkled lips. So, you wish to challenge old Hester, do you? Scream very prettily as you burn, I think you will. Hester? Ceres warned. Soldier, we know you carry munitions. Nancy glanced to Malachi. How in the name of all forgotten gods would you know that? The woman brought her long-fingered hands together to her lips, then let out a loud breath as if exhausted. Soldier, all of us here are close to many very great powers. Many of us have seen in the deck what you carry. We have terms to offer you for their use. For example, there are very many people here who wish to leave this crippled artefact. We will allow that once our terms are met. What's the job? Severus smiled behind her clasped hands. This way, if you please. She led him across the wide assembly hall. The gang of mages followed. The one who gave his name as Borchelaine sauntered along last. Many of the others cast nervous glances back to the man. A large scene of pastoral life decorated the polished floor they crossed. Hills, streams and mountains, all done in a mosaic of coloured stones. And she thought it odd that such a scene should be executed here within the heart of the moon's spawn. It seemed all too mundane. Midway across, they came to a large circular opening, flush in the floor like a well or a pool. And he peered down, only to throw himself backwards, his heart hammering. The opening sank bottomless into utter night, and a cool breeze wafted up. The wind carried with it the distant lap and murmur of the sea. They came to wide curving stairs cut from black glittering stone that led up to a tall set of double doors. The doors were cut from the same black stone, but set in panels of gold, bronze and silver. Similar vignettes of woods and fields decorated the panels, scenes of some sort of homeland, and she wondered. Somehow it struck him as odd that the Tiste should possess any sort of homeland. They seemed to have simply appeared from the sky, but of course they had to have originated from somewhere. These doors are barred to us, Ceres announced, slapping a hand to a silver panel. We cannot broach them. Do so, soldier, and you will save the lives of your fellows, plus many more. Ansi nodded towards the doors. What's inside? That is none of your business. Hester snarled. <coughs> Ogul agreed. Something its master thought destroyed, said old Hamper with a wheezing laugh. <laughs> the dream of night unending, Malachi provided as if quoting a line. What lies within, soldier? said Borchelaine, drawn close now, his hands clasped behind his back, his gaze in the distance over Ansi's head. Is nothing less than the throne of night.